Okay, we are on live. Yo. Happy day. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm teaching and you're watching, so that's a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's a very good thing because we have an alternative world here that's been going on since the beginning of time. And it's all been kind of not so good. Yeah. In every way, all of our history, all of what we see today in the news, you know, the possibility of that asshole Trump becoming president again or maybe getting away with not going to jail, you know. The least that can happen is, wow, what if he doesn't go to jail, you know. It's, but, uh, you know, we're going to witness this. That's what we're here for. Because this is a different time. This is the time of the coming of the Christ. This is the time now of the externalization of the Christ, which means I have to externalize the Antichrist, and I have to judge the Antichrist, and I have to have laid all that down over the years. Yeah. So it takes time to kind of pull this together. He's got to literally incarnate. He has to live his life. He has to make his own personal choices. He has his own personal lawyers. They have to be inherited from his father. They happen to be the most evil lawyers on planet Earth. It's his history. It's amazing. I couldn't have written it better. Yeah. I mean, he literally got from his past, his childhood, he inherits the evilest situation of lawyers in the world, the evilest lawyers, the lawyers that have been used for mafia. Yeah. It's, you know, only for that, yeah? And when you look at the guy, you know, he, he's like not just Trump, but uh, creatures that, that uh, are involved in the process of Trump, yeah? Imagine this, this guy here. That should come up. There we go. Yeah, you see this little character here? Yeah, real sweetheart, yeah? The guy, the guy, <laughs> Fat Tony, Fat Tony, yeah, he's the head of the mafia, for head of the mafia, yeah, uh, you know, it's like, you know, he's the head of the mafia, you know, no joke, in America, this is the dude, this is the dude, yeah, he runs everything, he has people killed, he has done things done, all over, and who does he have as his lawyer, keeping him out of trouble, yeah, Roy, Cone, Roy Cone, the little demon sitting right here next to Mr. Trump, Mr. 38-year-old Trump, yeah, because he inherited this demon, yeah, his father's lawyer and his father's best friend was Fat Tony because his father was a KKK gangster. A KKK gangster, his father, he inherited that. So we wonder, how, how is this guy such a shithead? How could he be this evil? Well, you know, sometimes the family you're born in is the reason why you're there. You know? And he inherited all this shit. So imagine, that's our little Trump. The, the boy in the center. Yeah? The one who thinks that he's Apollo. The one who uh, thinks that he's the son of what he thinks is God, which is Zeus. Yeah? He's going, you know, everything about me, all the Masonic reality, that's me. That's how I got here. Yeah? And, and it doesn't take much. If you were to try and study some of this, you'd find out that it's absolutely true. He is who he says he is. Yeah, he is Apollo. He is the son of Zeus. But Zeus is Satan, not God. And Apollo is Lucifer. Yeah? Not good. <laughs> not at all. Yeah? You know? But, you know, being that, you know, we, we have no true relationship with God and all the demigods and the history of God and all that is like way above humanity. Humanity is like animals, you know, you know, in territorial imperative, sniffing food all the time, you know, sniffing each other all the time, you know, having sex all the time, 
you know, living in a state of addiction all the time, you know, getting one thing, owning it, having ownership over it. Imagine all the animals that do that sort of thing. All the monkeys, all the horses, yeah, everything from even alligators behave like that, yeah. And we're, we're descendant, not of animals, yeah, but we can be like animals with this character amongst us, yeah. So this is our humanity. This is our inhumanity. This is the guy. But we, we don't know. We look back in history and we go, whoa, what a bad history. Yeah, because he keeps reincarnating. He keeps reincarnating. His last life, he had the best buddies. Hitler, you know, everybody. Mussolini, you know, this guy. Yeah. His previous, just his last life, you know? Then go back another cycle, another cycle, and they start blending in with the King of England and, you know, and, you know, the process of vampires. Vlad the Impaler, you know, the history behind the vampire. You know, all this links together. The, the uh, Queen and King of England is directly inherited to that, and so is Donald Trump, yeah? Yeah, so we've got a historical relationship of really badass people who put you head off and on a stake and hang it out, and they do this consistently throughout history. Throughout history, yeah? And at times, these people take the position as Pope, and they do the same thing. And we've had a long history of the Catholic Church going about putting people through torture, you know? And making them confess, you know, and and causing enormous irreparable damage to humanity, because we all reincarnate, yeah. So we all reincarnate, and we've had our last life with Mussolini and Hitler and all that, and you know, they they were dictators, so they dictated our life, yeah. And the outcome of your karma, having followed them, now is that really real? Well, let's take a look at that. Let's take a look at it today, today. Every single person who's associated with the devil called Trump is either in jail, going to court, or running from the law, yeah? Every single one of them. They lose their law license, they find themselves in jail, you know, they, you know, and they, and they're all standing there in a state of loyalty under a delusion of grandeur, you know, just like Satan, just like the Antichrist wanting to be the Christ, you know, the Antichrist wanting to be the most powerful on earth. So he becomes president. Now, what happens? He touches anything. What happens? It dies. It dies. He touches anything. He rapes little girls, ruins their lives, and gets away with it. All his life he's been doing this. All his life. And we look at, we've seen this in Little Lord Fromperoid, you know, all the books and all the movies and all the rich kids, all the rich people. It's like they're all incarnated evil. You know? And they are heartless sinners from childhood on. You know? And we just are just, just seeing reincarnation in the fashion and its reality because it has a, a very specific, you know, group that are involved. And they're demons. And they're fallen angels. And they're inside of God's plan as reincarnation exists here. You know? Trying to make its way into the fifth kingdom. Kingdom of the soul. Yeah? But everybody's stuck in the personality, the kingdom of the hum human being, yeah? And being in this kingdom, we just reincarnate stupid. We're ignorant of the kingdom of the soul. So we're ignorant of the fact that demons are existing, they're walking around, and we don't have to do anything to change that. We're just, we're not free, we're not liberated. Yeah? We're suffering constantly, we're at war. Yeah, and we wonder, wh how are we at war, you know? Well, these people are the heads of the war. 
Every single look at Mussolini, look at Hitler, the whole group of dictators. They all did the same thing. And they took every living human being as slaves to pull off their desires, their intentions. Yeah. And then we just watched it. That because that's so recent, I could talk about this and you can get enough from that historical aspect, even though you can't relate to yourself as being that. Yeah? But you are. There's no doubt about it. Yeah? That uh, Trump is a reincarnation of that. So are we. Yeah? So in all of our play, you know, th this process of Trump and all the Hitler and Jesus, can you just imagine? The Japanese evil, yeah, Shogun, yeah, the, the, the voodoo, yeah, of Africa and other nations, the satanic worship uh, in Mexico and in other countries, yeah, all of that going on, people crazy in it, demons being possessed in people, they become zombies. And we hear about them. We go, why? No, no. I think they just gave them a drug, put them to sleep, couldn't move their arms or their body, you know, so they were zombies. Yeah, that's what you say, you know. But these are voodoo witch doctors. And you go back to their house, and they have jars of people's souls that they know they believe is their soul with a curse on it. And they get paid to do that. Yeah? So putting a person as a zombie... You know, <laughs> it's just one of many things done inside of that dark, dark, dark world. And that world does exist. It does. Go to Mississippi. Go to New Orleans. Go to anywhere in there. And you'll see voodoo, voodoo, voodoo. Yeah? Who do voodoo? You do voodoo. Yeah? It's your past. Just because it's your past doesn't mean it's not who you are. Yeah? So everybody has a knee-jerk response when the Antichrist appears. We all go to war. We all think we're at war. We all think we're, you know, this, it's coming at us. What are we going to do, you know? England was literally a, a totally, a, we don't go to war. We don't have military ships. We don't, uh, all the way up to World War II. They don't go to war. And they were actually Germans. England was Germans. They were the process of Hitler, where Hitler wanted to be the ruler of the world. That England comes from that. Their monarch is a German monarch. Yeah? And everything about all this stuff that we go through war goes back to that cycle, that energy, that relationship of Europe. You know, and those, because, you know, they weren't in America, they weren't in other parts of the world, they, they all had to seize their fame, their power. You know, some were in China, some were in Japan, yeah, others all throughout Europe, in Spain, France, Italy, yeah, all creating this satanic process. And we have no idea that that's really what's going on. The greed and the corruption, and you know, our pops, you know, a Catholic church, and we're going, oh, great, that's good. But in reality, it's the evilest bank on earth, allowing corruption and the mafia to take hold. There'd be no mafia if there wasn't a Catholic church. Yeah? We're not even sure if all the bad guys from the war of Germany actually got caught because they were given refuge by the Catholic church. You know, what? How is that possible? Yeah? We have, we are embodied in this process of reincarnation. Yeah? And it's a knee jerk reality. We have Trump sitting here. Yeah? He is the Antichrist. Yeah? So I'm here. And I'm doing other things, things that I do life after life. Yeah? And they're not anything that you do. Maybe you've done because you met me. Yeah? And you witnessed that guy on the mountain. 
who doesn't move for years. That's me. That's not you. Because you're running around like a chicken with your head cut off. Going from job to job, family to family, life. All you do. Yeah. But that's, that's not my life. Yeah. You look at my history. I don't have that life. Yeah. I, I meditate. Yeah. Just like in this life. Whether I'm on a throne. Yeah. Because I do this so much in so many lives. Hundreds of thousands of my monasteries that I meditated at before there was ever a monastery becomes a monastery. Because I sit there and people come and they want to hear what I have to say. So I become teacher. Yeah. And this is the world teacher. Yeah. And it's a very busy situation. Yeah. It's not like anything else. It's very, very busy. Yeah. All the monasteries, all the enthronements, millions of students in Tibetan Buddhism. Yeah. All of them anchored in a thought form that the teachings that I give, you know, it will elevate the whole of the world, raise all sentient beings up and end war. Bring peace on earth. Yeah, that's what I say. That's what I say. That's what I tell everybody. So they all joined me in this process, creating peace on earth. Yeah. So that goes on and on and on. And I go from one meditation to the next. And I sit in places that are not expected. Yeah. Uh, this is Srinagar. This is the place where I, as Jesus the Christ, left my body. Yeah. At over 100 years old. A full, complete life, yeah? Taught Tibetan Buddhism. Taught Buddhism, yeah? I created the Mahayana, yeah? I created universities, yeah? At the very place I'm sitting, right here. So that's transmitting through me. That's what I do. Because I reincarnate. And I know I reincarnate, yeah? Because I'm the planetary logos. And all the rest of you do too. Except, I have an evil, evil, evil adversary. And that evil adversary is my anti-being, my very being. Yeah? So, if you are on the lower side, you can only see him. And all he does, all the suffering and the pain in the world, and the chaos, and you cannot figure it out. You can't figure it out. Because you don't know who's causing it. You don't. And unless you figure that out, this will never end. Yeah? Because you're being conned by Satan. He's using you as slaves to go out and dig gold and put it in his pocket. And if you're not willing to give it to him, he's going to take it from you by lying to you that you owe it to him. Yeah? And have loyalty so much. When this guy got out of being president, he made over $150 million just by telling people yeah, that he actually won the election. And it was stolen. And he didn't win. And he knows he didn't win. But he knows he can get money from people if he does say that. So he said that. Yeah? And all these people kept giving him money. They still keep giving him money. Yeah. Well, his intention, you know, all the way up as president, his intention was to get everybody to believe that there's no hope. No hope. Yeah. Oh, skip solar. Oh, I it's just a hoax. Yeah. Which means all scientists aren't true. And that there's no hope. Because that's what science is. Science reveals hope. And it gives us direction. It's like having rudder on a ship. You know, without science, you have no direction whatsoever. You don't know north from south. You don't know anything. 
you know? So as much as you can develop in science, the more you can become grounded in the truth. And you go theory, hypothesis, and all this kind of stuff. And it literally is how you walk. Yeah? It's how you talk. It's how you could sing so well. Yeah? It's how you can fix something in any way, shape, or form. It's science. And your mind has to go that direction. You can't be like Trump. A totally anti-science being. Who do you know that is an anti-science being? I have never met anybody who's an anti-science being, except for the Antichrist. He is overwhelmed by it. He does not, he wants you to think that, the, that us saving water in toilets and having them not be a five-gallon toilet, but only be a two-gallon toilet, and it flushes the same, nothing is different, you don't notice it at all. But he wants you to not do that by simply saying that these horrible people out there wanting to control your life in this deep state, yeah? That there's a deep state government out there that's trying to control your life. I'm here to protect you from that. Yeah? So don't ever buy a toilet that will save water. Don't do that. And don't you buy those special electric lights, you know, that, that hardly have any electricity, you know, or don't get solar and don't get wind generators and don't get electric cars and do do do, you know. Every single thing he's, he's basing on war, war against truth war against science. Recognize yeah. that over the past few years, the federal government's approach to offshore... But I, that was next, yeah. So his whole process is, is not to support the ongoing things that are happening, yeah. Where I've directed a lot of influence for us to get to the moon by 1969, and no one expected that. I directed a lot of influence to get us electric cars, and no one expected that, and we actually got them, and now we're going back to the moon. Not with just NASA, but with several, several beautiful companies that can take us there with special suits and a, a discount, yeah? A big discount, super discount, yeah? The rockets come flying back, we can reuse them over and over again. We're talking almost one-tenth the price of what it would cost if we did this alone the way we were doing it, yeah? But with group activity, the new group of world servers, something that the Antichrist cannot get his head around, yeah, at all. Where does this shit come from, he says? How did that even get invented? That's impossible. This is not my world. I won't have it, yeah? And his whole process is to make sure that we have no hope. So he comes out saying, let's, let's make America great, you know. And, and, and he can't say hope because that's what the other president says, you know. He's going to bring hope, you know. And he did. He did, yeah. So now we get to a place to where he's not president anymore, you know. And all of his defunding this and says, oh, defund the FBI today. That's what he's saying. Defund the FBI, defund the police, defund, you know, you know, uh, you know everything. You know, anything to do with that doesn't agree with me, defund it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he'll use the military to get his way. He'll use uh, all kinds of government agencies to get his way. But if they don't follow his way, fire him. Fire him. Top to bottom. Yeah. Because he can. Because he's evil. Yeah? And he did. He did all that. Yeah? From one day after another, we kept seeing it. Comey, you know? One guy, and just made no sense, other than the fact that he's covering up his tracks. He can't stop being evil. And every single person that's with him is evil. They're all running around looking at things going, I'm going to take that when I leave. I'm taking that when I leave. I got dibs on this. You know? Hey, I can make $5 million over the next five weeks if I tell everybody I can build the wall. 
You know, give me all the money you can and I will build the wall. You know, his closest friend, Bannon, and him, and a couple other, you know, con men. And it's just one con after another, every single one of them. You know, it, Giuliani's sitting there selling cigars. Yeah? You know, selling, you know, I mean, holy mackerel. Yeah? And they're all just a bunch of this process that we're, I'm showing you, you know, that this man was born to bring evil to the world. His family is evil. His process of who he is and how he exists, how he lives, the home he lives in, the mother he had that was completely, completely pushed aside. She was driven crazy. His brother was pushed aside to the point where he committed suicide by being an alcoholic. All pushed aside. The mother was pushed aside. The brother was pushed aside only because they weren't evil enough. They weren't evil enough. Yeah? And the, wi the wife, she, she couldn't see it in any way. She couldn't see that her husband was a mafia gangster of the KKK. She couldn't see it. You've seen this in TV, you know, where the housewife is like, la di da di da di da Cake's ready. <laughs> Cake's ready. <laughs> Ice cream tonight, everybody. You know, and uh, they're all coming in from shooting people and mafia and gangland shit. Yeah, true. It's not, it's in movies because I'm here. Yeah? Movies, TV is telepathic vision from me. Yeah? Giving you morals and ethics and insights as though you're seeing things from God's view. You literally get to see behind the corner. You get to hear the, what's in the head of the person when they're thinking, when you're watching that movie. You're in God's view. Yeah? How, how well can you handle that? Yeah? Because, you know, like, Archie Bunker, you know, when my view came in and I said, it's time for them to watch God's view, bunch of hypocrite bigots, every single one of you, yeah, you may think you're not, but let's see yourself on TV, let's see yourself on TV, hey Archie, yeah, yes Archie, you know, his wife, you know, toting, running, you know, hardly able to get it fast enough. Give me a beer. Yeah. The relationship between people was exactly that way. And I used telepathic vision in order to shock the shit out of people. Yeah. To bring people back around so that they could see themselves. Yeah. Because we can't, the biggest problem everybody has is that they can't see themselves because of Satan. Satan doesn't give shit, right? And since Satan doesn't give a shit, and that enters into you as part of who you are, you don't give a shit. Treat your wife that way, or do this that way, because there's no way of seeing the view of how you do it. You don't give a shit, so you don't see it. Yeah? And you don't see the neighbor doing it. You know? And it doesn't bother you that women don't have a right to vote. Yeah? It doesn't bother you that black women hardly ever got the right to vote. Yeah? It's just nothing bothers anybody. Yeah? Except when Christ comes into it and says, I'm going to shock the shit out of you. If I have to just get one guy, one congressman to like black people and come to respect a black woman, and come to think, oh, I think it's about time. This is during Johnson period. I think it's about time because that's what's happening. You know, we have Martin Luther King. We have Johnson. Johnson wants the bill to be signed, but he didn't include women. He didn't do that. Yeah, but it happened overnight. In an afternoon, this guy walks in the room and says, I am going to sign a bill. 
making it possible for black women to have the right to vote. When we pass this bill, I'm adding this to it. And I tell you, that was a shock. That was a shock. That totally went over the head of Trump's father. Totally went over the head of everybody because I'm on this earth. Even as a child, I'm moving everything in the right direction on the very day it can happen. Not a day before because this thing is in a state of collapse of complete possible nuclear detonation. And I'm piece by piece pulling those pins, cutting those wires, ending those entire destiny that was to play out by black women not having the right, but the right does get passed. Oh man, the violence after that just five years later would have been so extreme. Yeah? Yeah. We have no idea. You know, the fact that my being in this world is creating an alternative reality. Yeah. And it's moving people to have very specific interests. So here I am. I'm an ecologist. I'm a scientist. That's what Jesus Christ is. He's an ecologist, a scientist, a doctor, an engineer, a lawyer. All these things. I'm top of the line in all those things. Trump goes around and says, oh, I'm really smart. I would be the best engineer and best friend. Well, the truth is that that's what I am. And that's not what he is. But that is what I am. So he has to say all those things. Because he's the Antichrist. He has to claim to be me. And it, it, because I'm in the world, he has to do this. Yeah? Because I'm radiating at his ass. He is becoming, in a way, aware of the fact that there's a greater force than himself on this earth. And it's going to catch him. And it leads to the real God. And if there is an Antichrist, that's going to be a bad thing. The Antichrist will get caught. And everybody will know it. Yeah? And this is a, an energy of influence of closing the door of the astral plane. Yeah? And it's not at all understood in, in the dark lot. It's not at all understood that this is going to happen. This is really possible. But what do you think is going to happen when the Christ comes back into, into an externalized state? I'm here all the time, but I'm busy. Meditating. Busy. Really busy. Yeah? I'm setting up situations to where I can help people. Yeah? I'm arranging situations where I appear in certain locations, like in this one. This is in Tibet. Yeah? Around the year 2000. Yeah? And this is a bell that was made by the highest telepath of Tibetan Buddhism. This guy with the gold jacket. Yeah. And he starts having a vision of Mandarava. Yeah. He literally, he's, every night, he gets these dreams. He sees her, talks to her, and she tells him that Padmasambhava is here. And he's not even a disciple to Padmasambhava. He's not. He's a Sakya. You know? Padmasambhava is like, yeah, okay, that's fine, but I'm Sakya. I go directly to Buddha. Yeah? But he gets hit by Mandarava, who tells him, I think you need to reconsider. And, and he's like, I can't believe I'm talking to Mandarava. I can't believe it. So he starts drawing her, an image of her. Yeah? And that image, he turns it into a statue. Let me show it to you. So you see Mandarava standing there. You see that statue over to the right? That's the person he was talking to in his dreams. And 
that's her, right? And so when we arrive, you know, he comes to meet with me because the senior Rinpoche, who's one of the 35 Rinpoches of Padmasambhava, has found Padmasambhava's reincarnation. So he's building a monastery with me at Padmasambhava's meditation point where Mandarava and Padmasambhava spent time meditating. Yeah. So this guy is very well known and he also knows the Saki guy. So the Saki guy he goes, wow, I've been having these dreams and I have all this. I even have the crown of Padmasambhava. I've collected it. I've collected all the historical things of Padmasambhava and I've made a museum. You know, you got to come and see it. And, and, you know, I'm down in another room and I'm Padmasambhava and this guy's waiting to come to meet Padmasambhava, you know. And he comes in the room and what shocks him is that Mandarava's standing there. <laughs> and that's all he wanted to talk about. <laughs> it's so funny. I mean, I mean, from the moment we started meeting to the time all we're driving in the car all the way to his monastery, he keeps turning around looking at Mandarava. Going, hi, I can't believe this. You know? Yeah. So those, those processes, you know, bringing people together, bringing tukus together has a timing element to it. That's what I do. I, I, er, we all have our dharma, we all have our time, and your dharma may be uh, small in how much you're able to put out, but dharma has to do with a magical force, a very, very magical force. So it has to do with bringing people into incarnation, bringing people into group incarnation, and collectively creating a sangha, literally creating a sangha, a whole new world of humanity that is based on people incarnating with the soul, literally. And that's not, that's not something you do. It's not something you go to school for, yeah? It's something I do. And I create, uh, throughout a whole long period of time, I create this process. So it creates a, a big telepathic envelope of activity, yeah? And the activity is, <coughs> Here you have Trump and you have war, yeah, you have Hitler, you have Mussolini, you have yourself going through these processes with these people if you haven't taken refuge. Yeah, if you haven't taken refuge and you haven't become a monk and a nun, you haven't really meditated and you choose to be at peace and never go to war and never get married, if you choose to do that, you probably weren't in Hitler's situation. But what's the chance? If you weren't in Hitler's situation, you were in Mussolini's situation. If you weren't with Mussolini, you were with Japanese. If you weren't with Japanese, you were with the Chinese. Or, or Europe. Yeah? yeah? So there wasn't a good place. And there wasn't anything that was supporting world peace. Bringing world peace. Yeah? Because everything was really much, much more a complete other world based on the Antichrist. The whole thing, kings, queens, the ability, the foundation for these people to continue reincarnating and have something to do when they get there. Yeah? So that everybody's, like right now, everybody's striving who's going to be the first trillionaire. Imagine that. I mean, that's a lot of money, folks. That's a lot of money. I mean, when we were all wondering, wow, how many millionaires are there in America? Maybe like, you know, 50? You know, and that's the way it was. And those millionaires were like 10 million, 15, 20 million max. Yeah, not, not like, you know, 100 million close to a billion. You know, billionaire didn't happen very often. Yeah, yeah, Westinghouse. Yeah, people who were in charge of oil, people who had a monopoly, they reached close to a billion or a billion. Yeah. And they, that was individual singular down to 20, 15, 10. Yeah. Well, right now we're in thousands, thousands of billionaires. And they're so common, we don't even know that they're billionaires. They're just, they just have lots of shit. 50, 60 cars. You know, even, even people in Senate and Congress are almost billionaires. 
Yeah? The seeking and the desire of money is what gives us war. Yeah? It's what gives us war. Yeah? It, it takes everything from everybody. Yeah? There is no such thing as a trillion dollars. There's no such thing as a billion dollars. There's no such thing as a dollar. Yeah? It's all illusion. It's not real. Yeah? What if, what if all of a sudden the economy is completely collapsed and the dollar is not worth shit? Yeah? Or somebody finds gold everywhere. Diamonds on the ground. You know? Everything you think is riches all of a sudden becomes common. And what would we do? It's by the limitation of things that becomes rich. Yeah? The limitation of gold makes gold go up. The limitation. Yeah? It makes a value behind things. And it's not true. It's not true. It's only because we want more. We want it more because there's fewer of it. Yeah? That's because, you know, we're the, we're the few. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. And that's where he's coming from. That's where he's coming from. And that's not where I'm coming from. Yeah. Where I come from were people like this. We spend our time making sand mandalas. You know? Sand mandalas. Yeah? We pray. We do puja. Yeah? We make statues. Yeah? Of the very deities that we meditate on and we, in, we literally embody. Our body becomes the deity that we're meditating on. We're nothing. Yeah? And it's not like we want to become a statue or something. We want to become better. Yeah? So we let go of everything. This is what we do. We're not, we're not interested in money. Yeah? What is that about? How is that possible? Yeah? You can see here, this is a Sam Mandala painting. Yeah? For world peace. This is where I brought the highest living lamas of Tibet. Out of my Compson. I bring them to England where we're going to save the world. Yeah? And all we got hit was by witches and warlocks. That's all that happened. Yeah? They just surrounded us. Yeah? And they wouldn't let us out of the country. The only way we can go is back. We couldn't go to America. We can go to, can go to Canada. We can go on, even to Mexico. Yeah? It was done and over with. Yeah? Because we're so different. Yeah? We're, not, we're not the Antichrist. We're not moving things for money. Yeah? Nothing is manifesting in that direction. So we're turning a wheel of Dharma. These sand paintings are part of turning the wheel of Dharma. Yeah? And you don't see this, but it's activity. Yeah? And it's another group of people carrying out activity that you are 100% unaware of. And everything about anything, about any single anything, that makes you happy, that makes you enjoy your piece of cake, it comes from these people, not from you. Their meditation liberates you enough to enjoy your meager bullshit life until you're willing to take refuge and end that process. Yeah, because it's money. It's all money. Yeah. Everything is about money. So if you like take refuge and all of a sudden now you're in my group, you know, and I say, okay, we're carnivore, you know, and, and we uh, live together in a group, you know, and we have a monastery, yeah, and uh, everybody's welcome who is a monk or a nun, yeah, and there is no cost to it, there is no price, we do not ask for money, we provide a service. And within that, it's natural to ask for, okay, etheric weaver, $150, okay, abaja, because we put all of our time and energy to provide the tools and vibration and light to raise up humanity through this service. So there's no money involved in it. 
that money then goes back to buy sandwiches and food and sleeping bags and all kinds of things for poor people on the street, whether they be in Omaha or in Nepal or in Tibet. You know, that's where all our money goes. It's all turned around, constantly moved towards service, constantly. It has nothing to do with making more money. Yeah? We're only provided exactly what we need at that moment, and then we're empty again. So we're always on the edge of empty. We're, we're never thinking, when do we become a trillionaire? You know? Yeah, all the work we do and everything, because when you're in that job and you're thinking that that's what you do and this is what you're doing, you know, that's what goes on. Those are the wheels that turn. That's the life that goes on, yeah. But that's not the life that I'm bringing to this world. Yeah. What I'm bringing to this world is a mass of millions of people. Like in this, this same guy had this bell made. These are poor people. And he's creating a, 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 a beautiful monastic situation for the, the presence of Padmasambhava to reincarnate, which according to the Dalai Lama, he doesn't do. I mean, if this guy is putting his entire life into the possibility that Padmasambhava is on the earth and he's going to have this bell rung and he's going to ring that bell and he's never rang that bell before until we got there. Yeah. And he took us up to the bell, that great big stick you see there. It was me and Tara were the ones to grab that stick and ring the bell of world peace. And this is all the living masters, the highest living masters on earth all sponsored that to happen because of the possibility of Padmasambhava being incarnated. Yeah. You know, and then all of a sudden I show up and there I am. And there is Mandarava. So that's what I'm saying about telepathic vision. In my Dharma, I make manifest this world. I do it in complete relationship with God's plan. I don't get in the way. And God's plan happens fast. But that's not the way it is for you. I can go anywhere in any place and the miracles that I bring with me is different than what you would have if you went there and did it on your own. Yeah. You know, my process is so dramatic, so overwhelmingly dramatic. And as it comes down, synchronicity is going to be the whole entire thing. Yeah. Right now, we're all separate. Yeah. We're all in different places. I've had experiences where I've, I've been in places to where uh, people by the hundreds, you know, have left their homes, yeah, and I'm just sitting in a Dharma center, which is a healing center, in Rouge, Oregon. Yeah, and I got nothing to do because I have a clinic and everybody's quit because they think I've gone crazy. Yeah, because I have these certain situations where I meditate and I levitate, and people would see it, and it scared the shit out of people, and so they all left. Yeah. So I was left alone in my clinic. <laughs> and I'm sitting there and phone rings and I talk to someone and I go outside and I see people camping just outside in the parking lot. And I see a motorhome come up and it's parked there and these people start walking toward me and calling me Jesus and saying, we're here to be your disciple. And I said, I turned around and said, no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> I had just turned 30, yeah, and, you know, there's no preparation for something like that. Yeah, my, my work has been meditation all my life. I've been stopping wars and, and creating rocket ships for people to go to the moon to end nuclear war. You know, I did all that, but the preparation to externalize is Jesus the Christ or Buddha or anything that is personal is not on my mind. Yeah, I, I do nothing to prepare for such a thing, yeah. So when that came, you know, there had to be a lot of changes for myself to allow a lot of things to come together, you know, to allow the Tibetans to find me, to allow the entire process of externalization for Maitreya to happen. It all happened within just a month, 
from that period of time. Yeah? And that's the law of attraction that happens to Buddha. That doesn't happen to everybody else. That's why they say, in Jesus' case, thank you for bringing me here. Yeah? Yeah? You have no idea. You do not have will over your feet. You don't. You don't have will over, oh, I think I'm going to go to the movie. You don't have will over that. Yeah? It's either God or Satan taking to the movie. Yeah? Depends on where you're going. Yeah? If you take refuge, you've got a better chance of being in God's path and going where God wants you to go on time. On time. Yeah? You know, so the sequence of, of bringing all this together is, is all telepathy. All done through telepathy. So all my process is meditation. My, my work is meditation. The creation of this uh, Shambhala, yeah, that center, yeah. That's not something someone does. Yeah, that's just not something anybody does. Yeah, but it's what I do. And I don't do it in any small fashion. I do it because it's science. Yeah. I work with light as a scientist. Yeah. I'm so good. I understand light so well. I can see light in my mind. And I see it take a form of a 51 degree pyramid. And I see the earth. And I see the earth at a very specific size and weight. Yeah? And I see the moon. I see the moon at a very specific size and weight. And its trajectory is held by the mind of Buddha. And the size and weight of the earth is held by the mind of Buddha. All of it. It's a state of meditation. And it's done through light. All matter collects together. Thank you for bringing me here. Does that make sense? Every molecule, every atom is moved by me. Now, you may not believe that, and you will know it, but you may not believe it. And if you don't get to know it, if your process doesn't allow you to know it, the struggle will be intense, overwhelmingly intense, because you'll be pulled from one side to the other. Yeah? And you won't know what the heck is going on? You'll find fault in yourself. You'll find fault in other people. You'll get nervous. You'll have anxiety attacks. You'll go through all kinds of shit. Because we're in a world of war. Yeah? The Antichrist and the Christ are fighting it out. And all the fallen angels are losing. Yeah? GOP's losing, folks. Yeah? They're not real. The shit they say is a lie. It's bullshit. It's made up. It's to get you angry. Taking away all the hamburgers, they say. There's never going to be a Christmas, they say. Or there's going to be a Christmas, and they took it away a long time ago. Huh? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Confusing. Yeah? It's all chaos. It's all chaos. You say the lie, you create the chaos, and then you can walk through the smoke. And no one will see you. Does that make sense? That's wizardry. That's wizardry. Yeah? Just imagine, how many friends do you know? How many people of yourself do you know that have an anxiety problem? Can't think clearly and have feelings of anxiety. Yeah? Those feelings of anxiety permeate into everyone around you. And they get feelings of anxiety. Yeah? And they can't help it. Yeah, you can have the same thing. You walk into a room and you could sense they're looking at you. You know? And you look over and you can see the very person who's looking at you. You know? You turn around, you can feel someone looking at the back of your head thinking terrible things. Yeah? And you have no idea that you're a living embodiment of cursing. And it's really hard not to be a person who curses. Yeah? Because you don't think your thoughts go outside your body and enter another person's body. That your anxiety doesn't cause anxiety in the person next to you. Yeah? 
And after a while, and that person has no idea as to why they're having this anxiety. But they start having events that come back from things that might have gone wrong in their life, and they start going, oh, well, well, this is the reason, you know, rationalizing their anxiety. Yeah? And it's stirred by the process of just someone you know nearby having anxiety. Yeah? And, it, it, and the worst part of it is that it's so out of place. It's so out of place, you know? You could be in heaven, you know? And if one person is sitting in anxiety, heaven's over with. Because everybody just drops down to that person's level. Yeah? And there's not a way to get out of it. Yeah? Unless you've taken refuge and you practice Practice, 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 and do everything you possibly can to stop those thoughts and turn them into karma yoga. Turn them into karma yoga. Yeah? Do an offering for somebody. Make offerings at all times. Not for yourself. Oh, I'm going to get a better job. I'm going to get less anxiety. I'm going to clear my pain. You know, I make these offerings. Yeah? The offerings have to be finding someone in need and being so telepathic, intuitively telepathic, you serve that need before they ask for it. That's a human being. That's a human being. But few people are human beings. They don't use the telepathy of love and service. They use the telepathy of gossip. Yeah? Where they just assume you know, they analyze, you know, they come up with, you know, this is who this person is. This is a, it's all uh, putting people in boxes, yeah, and not using your telepathy at all or your intuition. You know, if, you, if you're in service, then whatever the person's problem is, whatever it is that makes you have a knee jerk, you know, your empathy and your compassion doesn't have a reaction, yeah. And that person immediately starts healing. Because you had no idea that you were the cause of that problem. We're all here together. We're all meant to be brothers and sisters, caretaking for other people. But, mm -hmm, you know what I mean? Not really happening. Yeah? So all we get is shit, anxiety, and then we wonder where it's coming from. And everybody's like, not me. What? What are you talking about? <laughs> I'm just tired all the time. Why? It's not me. I'm just tired. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Because there's little. Uh, if there's uh, on this earth until we clean this up, and we're going to clean this up. We're in enormous process right now. We had everything. We had everything. We, we, we were told we're never going to do solar. We're never going to do this. We're going to get more oil. We're going to do more pipelines. We're going to do more nuclear. We're going to do everything but the right thing. Yeah? There's never going to be a greenhouse effect. It's actually going to get cooler and nicer and all good things, you know. That's what Trump says, you know. This guy, he comes from a bloodline a bloodline of incarnation and reincarnation. And this is his bloodline. It's an old story. At first, they seem ridiculous. The big egos, the bad ideas. Some of them seem almost comical. Not here, the people say. Yet men like these find their following because they know how to use hate and fear. Fear of foreigners, immigrants, and minorities. Of Jews, Muslims, Christians. They dismiss the experts, demonize the press, promise they alone can deliver better lives and brighter futures. If they could only be rid of the obstacles to that power. Eventually, enough people buy it they hand the fate of their nations over to madmen. But then suddenly, it's not so funny. The military deploys on the streets to protect the leader. 
Names appear on enemy lists. Opposition voices are silenced or imprisoned. The leader promises the right bloodlines will survive, and the wrong ones will be purged. It's an old story, one that could never happen here. The very idea is ridiculous, almost comical. There's no one dividing us, no one telling us who to hate, who to put in cages, no one demonizing the press, dismissing the experts, no would-be savior claiming he alone can fix our problems if only the obstacles to power are removed. No one singling out the other, telling us what should become of them. No enemy lists, no threats of imprisonment. No one lashing out when their ego is threatened, demanding absolute loyalty and using the military to control the streets. No, it can't happen. Not here. We know too well how it begins. And it's always been up to us how it ends. That's a fact, yeah. And we are in a place, because of the appearance of the Christ and externalization of the hierarchy, that no one's ever told about. It's all like in myth, you know, Jesus, you know, well, he doesn't come back, you know, so that's it, you know. But what if, what if he didn't want to come back, yeah? What if he didn't want to come back, but he still stayed alive? And reincarnated, but chose not to come back. Who wants who wants people to beat up on you and treat you like that? No, it didn't happen. So I s established Tibetan Buddhism and reincarnated as Padmasambhava and Milarepa and Samkhapa and all these different lineage holders, the heads of Tibet, and even the finest students. You know, I then became from student to be the head. Yeah. Yeah. So a, at all times, that's all I've done for all the years that I've been alive, that you've known me as Jesus, you know, and I was a real novelty then, you know, but up to then I was a major novelty too. I was Shiva. Yeah. I was Krishna. Yeah. Yeah. I sit on hills. You know, I don't move. I'm there for hundreds of years and I stay in the same body. I rarely eat, I meditate, and I see shit. And I orient a new vision that will bring people realizing what it is that's coming down. How can we change this? But it takes thousands of years. I have to do this through the, the Buddha, the Dharma, the Sangha. I have to do this through the process of attaining students. Yeah? And then those students have to take refuge under me as Buddha, yeah? And then they have to spend life after life after life after life going, attaining bodhicitta, keeping bodhicitta in that life despite all the hardships of where you're born and how you're treated and what's going on, yeah? You still got to continue your bodhicitta that you started in a previous life. And you got to do this hundreds and hundreds of times until you become bodhisattva. And that, that means that you're going to be a Rinpoche, yeah? Today, in this age, in the year 2000, we have over 5,000 Rinpoches. 5,000 Rinpoches, yeah? That's very high. Those people who have taken refuge and under 5,000 Rinpoches are millions of Sangha members that are their students, yeah? Yeah? You know, so, th I mean, this, we're talking about a tree of thousands and hundreds of thousands and millions of people that have collectively chosen. Look at Tibet. Tibet is about Dharma. It's about turning this crazy ass wheel. Om Mani Padme Hum, Om Mani Padme Hum. From the very lowest of lows to the highest highs. That's the intention. Taking refuge and living that life, that culture. And despite that, we still have corruption. We still had problems. Yeah. But because of me, I always fought that and made sure the students who could receive me would receive true Dharma teachings and they would grow. So I would have to reform. What I had left behind would be taken over by previous students and they would change it. 
and it would become dogmatic. So then I reincarnate again and take a whole new way of looking at it and become the reforming teacher. Yeah. So every 500 years, and I can show you historically, every single 500 years, I come back as a reformer of my previous Dharma activity, establishing it. And each one creates a new tree. Yeah. And that becomes a big tree. Yeah. So right now, we are in a world where Buddha activity is ready to inaugurate this world as a sacred planet. A sacred planet. That's, that's all we need. You know, because we're not alone. We're here with ourselves, yeah? But we're not alone. There are such things as ETs and angels and God, yeah? A whole enormous amount of celestial Buddhas, numbers you cannot imagine. But they cannot give blessings to a non-sacred planet. They can't. It has to be started by an individual Buddha that takes and holds that energy of blessing and turns that wheel, and after maybe light years from now, you know, humanity takes that and starts growing. Yeah? That's the only way it works, is by people taking the vow to change and have the view of seeing Buddha and receiving the Dharma teachings and receive, in your mind, you start seeing what he's saying. Because this is all telepathic vision. Yeah. So I created TV, I created all kinds of things in order to enhance your ability to receive telepathic vision. Yeah. So now <coughs> we have Biden in place. And with Biden, you know, the process of my work is is to bring about human rights. You know, giving giving people back their rights. You know, well over the last year rights have mainly been taken away from women. Yeah. And there's a reason for that, because you barely got your rights. And because you barely got your rights, no one really wanted to give you those rights. They took them away because they reincarnated. And they did it only because they were forced to because of the governmental situation at the time. Yeah. They were forced to. They didn't want to. Yeah. They were hypocrite, bullshit, pieces of shit. Just like Marjorie Taylor Greene and all the rest out there, they do not give a shit. They're there for the money and the fame and the glamour. Yeah? And they're crazy. They're crazy. And they channel the other side. They channel. They say conspiracy this, deep state that, and all of that. And they're talking about themselves. There's nobody else out there doing that shit. It's only them. Yeah? So that's a delusion of glamour that's being actually amplified in the world, yeah? So that amplification has an opposite side to it when the healing begins. We vote in this guy Biden, yeah? And Biden comes in and does this. Recognize that over the past few years, the federal government's approach to offshore wind has probably seen like a, a chicken with its head cut off, no direction, no consistency, but it is a new day under the Biden administration. Now the administration says it's moving ahead with a key environmental review for a long planned wind project off the shore of New Jersey that could power half a million homes. Offshore wind has its opponents, including those who say it's unreliable because the wind doesn't blow 24 hours a day. That hurdle can be overcome. But some who live along the shore also worry the towering turbines will disturb their view or raise their electricity costs. The New Jersey project has long faced opposition from local city councils. When somebody says, well, not in our backyard, well, I say not in anybody's backyard if you don't know what it costs. But as the U.S. tries to shift away from fossil fuels, it needs more clean electricity to power everything from homes and stoves to cars and trucks. That's why the Biden administration says there's huge untapped potential that starts at the water's edge. Now, that does not mean a windmill. It doesn't mean a windmill. Yeah, it's at the water's edge. It's in the water. Yeah, that could be different. And it is different. This is what it is.
The moon exerts more pull on the Earth than the sun does, despite being significantly smaller. So basically, the moon is constantly pulling on the Earth, including... So what this is going to talk about is tidal energy. And tidal energy is consistent 24-7. It never stops. And if you put generators that are the same thing as a windmill or a generator that you have that for uh, a dam, yeah, when the water is moving forward, it turns that generator and you get a ton of electricity. Yeah. So what they're going to do is they're going to utilize the moon and its tidal energy and put these generators all over the earth in the ocean and create enough electricity for the entire planet and end the whole situation. And you do not even have to worry about batteries because the electricity is consistent. It never stops. It's consistent, yeah? So take a look at this. This is what we've come up with, and I think it's pretty cool. ...on land surfaces. However, land surfaces do not move that much because they are not very flexible. They move not more than 55 centimeters a day. But when it comes to the ocean, the pull is more dramatic because water is liquid and can respond to gravity more. The moon pulls on both the side of the Earth facing it and the opposite side, but the greatest force is felt on the side closest to the moon, at the center of the Earth, the gravitational force is zero. High and low tides come with a degree of accuracy as the Earth continues to spin, and tidal energy engineers simply take advantage of this phenomenon. But how do they do this, or how does tidal energy work? The main trick is to harness the kinetic energy created from the rise and fall of ocean tides and currents, or tidal flows, and turn it into electricity. The larger the tidal range, or the height difference between sea level at high and low tide, the more power can be produced. So we do this in three ways. Yeah, we do it in the way you just saw. That's one. Another one is a wall where you have a wall and it's not very high. It's down low. But inside that wall is a whole bunch of those generators. So the wall creates a pressure force. The water comes, whoosh, you know, going back and forth. Yeah. And as it hits the wall, it comes pressure. Yeah. That pressure then is funneled. Yeah, that funnel becomes a faster turbine. So that's more electricity than the individual ones that are out there. But those are number one. You can put them anywhere and everywhere. Yeah. And the other ones are walls. Yeah. And you're kind of limited by, you know, where you're going to place them and how things will work. But, you know, at least 60% of all of these things will be built will be built with that one in standard. Yeah. Then another one is a series of smaller walls that are able to be put in locations everywhere and they amplify the entire thing up until you get and from this you get constant electricity, batteries are not necessary, storage is not necessary. Yeah. It's a matter of controlling the immense amount of electricity that will be pouring through. Yeah. Isn't that cool? Yeah. And we're not talking about, you know, fossil fuel digging up the ground anymore, you know, possibly making another nuclear power plant, you know, or pipelines going from Canada down to Mexico, yeah, because they need oil. If we do this as a world, and we are, this is already happening in Europe, it's already happening in other places, yeah, so this is the standard. In science, in science, we are one. We're not politicians, yeah? We're scientists. And as scientists, we see ourselves as responsible people, responsible people of the earth, of people, of people, yeah? And they're very educated, very well known. They focus on things that aren't working and what will make it work. So we're thinking wind generators, yeah? Well, yeah, yeah, but we're in the process of developing technology. Yeah. So along with that, we're working also with the moon cycles and we're working with other things and we're working with solar. Yeah. So we're also going to have solar and solar. There are certain crystals that are using to make solar. And we've just completely blown out that process where we had a limitation of maybe 8 percent, 5 percent, 10 percent. The amount of when the electricity comes in, we only get one bandwidth that comes from the sun. And there are all these bands, there are, uh, you know, all these colors 
frequencies, rays. And we can only pick one. And then we have to pick an in-between band. And we don't get anything else. So all the rest is wasted. All that electricity coming from the sun is wasted. Because we don't have a way to capture it. The, all the solar that we're using has limited band. That's why we say it only gets 5% of its potential. We're on, right now, the highest level in this is 40%. 40% is earth-shaking. That's 10 times more than what we could possibly get on a really good day. Yeah? That's incredible. Yeah? And so this means people's roofs, individuals, cars painted on. You know, because this particular kind of solar is a kind of solar where it would normally take 1,400 degrees to create those crystals to go onto a solar panel. It takes that much heat, yeah? Where this new technology that we've advanced, we now do it at 100 centigrade, yeah? Holy shit, that's an oven. That's a simple oven. That means that we don't have to spend millions of dollars for that super oven that we have to control and do all these things. We can get inexpensive ovens and make solar panels. And the solar panels, they're made in layers. So by making them in layers with this new type of crystal formula, yeah, we're able to take two to three of those energy pathways. You know, rather than just one band, we're now getting three bands. Yeah? So we're hoping for two bands. Two bands is like going to give us 40%. Three bands would give us as much as 55%. Yeah? That's crazy. That's crazy. That means that because it could go on plastic, it could go right on the making of a car. The whole outer part of the car is a solar panel. Isn't that cool? Yeah? You make the car out of hemp and you put the solar in, you got yourself. Yeah? That's the future of things to come. Yeah? So the cars that we're driving, you know, because of the efficiency, the amount of watts, the amount of amps that it requires us to get one mile, yeah? But uh, as the future goes along and the solar gets better and the engine gets better and the motor that we're using gets better, the type of every bit of technology advancement of science that we're pulling together allows us to use less and get more. Does that make sense? Yeah? So despite the fact we're going to have more electricity than we've ever had in the world, that's money. That's the real thing. That's money. That means people can desalinate their water. That means people can, can have a, a toilet that burns up poop because they have a lot of electricity and they never have to flush that toilet or any of that that you, that you really can't do when you're in Africa and when you're in the middle of Sahara Desert, you know, and you got no water whatsoever. How, you know, all you could do is dig a hole, poop, and, and live in a very bad scenario. But with the electricity, we have light. We have air conditioning. We have farming within the inside. Yeah? Sprouts. All, any, anything simple life, we can be fulfilled. And it's all free. Free money. Imagine that. Yeah? And it, it, it's not like, you know, uh, we got to work hard to get that money. We wake up in the morning and w we have our coffers full. You know, all the energy we need for the whole day and, you know, it doesn't cost us anything. What we're doing, the things we do. Imagine if you live a good life and you, you go through your process and you're, you know, you've taken refuge, you know, and you meditate a lot. And you're, you know, you, you have skills. You can make anybody's best cabinets in the world. You can fix all the things that you might have wrong. You know, you all ride the same similar bikes. You know, we all have very simple life and we all, some are better at doing one thing than another, you know. And so then we barter and we share and we care, yeah. And no one goes without, everybody's got a great car, everybody's got a great house, everybody's got everything, yeah. Imagine you, you join certain groups and you got barn raising, house raising, you know. They all just get together in a weekend and they build a whole entire house. You know, because it's a group of 20 people all in one group. You know, that their life is that way. They, you know, you know the Mormons, they don't build houses, but there are people that are out there that do. 
you know, when they come into the group, yeah, and they facilitate the, the right relationship of the skills that we're going to develop. Because we don't want to sit around bored, and we don't want to sit around, you know, and not doing the things that we want to do in our life. But we have no idea what it is we want to do. We have never been given a lifestyle. We're babies, yeah? We're just coming out of war, yeah? Yeah? Mothers and fathers, they, they don't even like each other, yeah? We're coming out of war, you know? Marriage is war. Relationship is war. Boyfriends, girlfriends, ends up a breakup. War, you know? Never become a friend again. Always tell shit on each other, you know? Oh, come on, we can't do this, yeah? It's all about war. Everything is about war. Taking refuge ends war. Yeah. And we're going to do this. And in reincarnation, the establishment of that reincarnation is that all the tukus get to incarnate in your families. And people who take refuge, this is what you'll find, that people who take refuge, and, and only within just a cycle of maybe four or five you know, cycles of life, that you take refuge and then you come together and, and now you're you're in love with another person who's taken refuge and da da da, da and you know you're in the same mind state and you're da da, da, da now you're gonna have a kid da, 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 da. and what do you know it's Rinpoche woo woo you know you're a teacher you know and just like in you know the movie Little Buddha you know shit like that happens all the time and in this Western world because the numbers of tukus are so much. We have over 5,000 now. We're going to have over 50,000 in the next 20 years. 50,000 because people take refuge. And they've been taking refuge for a very long time. But the hippies took refuge big time. Yeah. So that's the new group of world servers. Those are the new, that's the group within the whole of the system that willfully took refuge in the last lives. Stopping their relationship to joining the Vietnam War or going to war or being a part of divorce. Yeah, it's true. You know, the whole of society was reestablished and we all kind of died and now we're coming back. And that new cycle that we're in is a cycle of the new group of world servers. Yeah. So we're going to see more of that, but we're mainly going to see it because of these things. But my activities, we would have people like the Dalai Lama, people that are holding back the Karmapa, the Tukus, yeah? Harming the Tukus, harming the incarnation of Tukus, not allowing the incarnation of Buddha to be recognized, all those kind of things. And you wouldn't think that's going on in Tibetan Buddhism, but it was, and it is, yeah? So this is a stupa. This is the building of a stupa in, in Dharamsala at the house of the Dalai Lama, yeah? And this stupa is built by all the prisoners of Tibet. Yeah. And they they wanted to create a sanctuary, a place for their soul, their Buddha nature, their bodhisattva, to be in there. So if you look close enough, you'll see that picture there. That's me. Yeah. And I'm giving teachings to to the uh one of the thirty five uh students of, of uh Padmasamhava, that's what I'm doing in that picture, yeah. And, you know, so that, that became, you know, quite the picture in Tibet. You know, people wanted to use that picture. So that became the picture that's going to be put in this stupa forever, yeah. These stupas last forever, you'll see. We build darn good stupas, and they're domes, and they don't fall apart with earthquakes, and they last for thousands and thousands and thousands of years, yeah? So what we put in there is a psychic energy, a psychic influence that is permeating and turning the wheel, just like the wheels in Tibetan Buddhism that we would turn. So inside there is, is uh, in, in the wheels of Tibetan Buddhism, y you have millions of prayers. Om Mani Padme Om, Om Mani Padme Om, Om Mani Padme Om. And so, and it's wrapped up in a coil, you know, inside, yeah. And they're just really thin, so that you just, it's wrapped up in that coil, and it goes around, 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 becomes the big round object that you see that's spinning. 
And that's actually millions of prayers inside that that are layered in. Yeah, and then it has a little thing that with a stone on the outside so they could spin. Yeah, and so you're literally doing you and those prayers become one. So every time you do Om Mani Padme Hum, you do a million Om Mani Padme Hums. Does that make sense? That's the way we see it. That's the way we see it. And we're not crazy. We're not crazy. This really works. Yeah, it really does work. <coughs> so they put my picture in this, uh, just like me inside of that thing. And then everybody is doing Om Mani Padme Hum, Om Bajadara, Om... Buddha, all that. And, and I'm actually the person who's in that picture. And now I'm physically sitting in the stupa, saving all, every single person of Tibet. <coughs> every single person, yeah? All their names and everything are put inside this stupa, yeah? So for that period of time, from 2000 on, uh, that's what I'm doing. Yeah? I'm, I'm permeating that process. <coughs> and then, here in Shambhala, I take that same energy and I transmute that out into the cosmos. Yeah? So that the pujas that I do are not extended just to this planet. That I'm, I'm willfully making it known that this planet is sacred and it has a planetary logos. Yeah? If it has a planetary logos, there's no Satan. Yeah? The moment I'm completely in-housed as the position of planetary logos, which isn't a voting system or anything like that. It just is a period of time. It's all about time. Yeah? And I have my very specific time. And you l if you watch me, you'll see I change. I change. You don't. I do. Yeah, because I'm being turned into something. Yeah, you're not. You're going to be changed by being liberated from being what you've been turned into. Yeah, and that gets released. It starts from your mind and your emotions and then it hits your physical body. So after many, many, many lives, every life, you go through what I'm going through right now. Yeah, which is a, a reincarnation. Yeah, I, I literally, right before your eyes, I reincarnate. Yeah, and I'm not, you see me four years from now, I won't look exactly the same as I do now. Yeah, I'll be more vital. I'll, I'll, I'll have abilities that no one else has. Yeah, because I'm changing. I'm becoming. Yeah, I'm not the other end. Everybody else comes from baby and then goes like that. Not me. I go the opposite. Yeah? So everything is in process of becoming. Yeah? So that's what we're going to witness and that's what closes the door to the astral plane. It's because there is not supposed to be a planetary logos here. Never has been. But there is now. Yeah? And that, as I become solid, so does the whole earth become solid as having a planetary logos. So the Christ principle goes into the very fiber of the planet. Everything I say that this is light, that pyramid is what it is, and all these things are what they are, all very true. But the thing is, is that I use those things as psychic tools. Psychic tools. Personally. Yeah? So I'm wielding energy against the dark lodge and turning things spiritual. Making things spiritual. Yeah? So... <coughs> As you see, they put my picture in there. They put the Buddha statue in my pyramid, in the stupa. They put all these relics in there. They put all the signed declarations. And then after this, the whole thing gets filled up with prayer pots and wheels of, you know, thousands and thousands of people's names with prayers on them just filled up all the way to the top and then holy sand you know just like a sand painting all that's done inside there filled up to the top to where you can't even see inside anymore and then it's closed off with a buddha yeah so that's it. 
That's establishing a process for communication. Communication. That's making me the planetary logos. That event, that one day, that one circumstance, that circumstance happened only for one person on this planet. And this planet, those Tibetans, this earth, that nation gets healed by that person. And it's not a statue. It's a person. Yeah? So that awakens everything that I'm doing. <coughs> I'm sitting here now. Those are seeds that I planted, and they're still working. They're permeating through me beyond your wildest, wildest imagination. And all the Dark Lodge is dying. They're getting more mentally ill. They're emotionally unstable. They're physically losing ground. And if they've broken the law, they're going to be busted. You know, because that's physical, that's emotional, and that's mental. Yeah? The law is based on that. And they, they can walk around and break the law all the time and never get busted. Because we don't have the physical, emotional, and mental relationship to Buddha. We have to have that in order to have the view of seeing these people get destroyed. Yeah? We can watch them be destroyed right now, but can we support it? Can we bring it into action? Can it actually close the door? Yeah? Can everybody make an agreement that this is what's going on, that now he's got to go to jail? He did all these terrible things, you know? Or do we tolerate, you know? And, and just let it slide, you know? Not no big deal, you know? That's what we've done. That's how all the wars became what they did. So the heart is strength. The heart is courage, yeah? And that's what I'm instilling in everybody right now. I'm, I am strength and courage. I'm pulling this shit off. A one-man show doing this, you know, and from birth. You know, I mean, you know, tortured and everything. You cannot imagine all the things that were said and done to keep me from getting to where I'm at right now. But these are also things that, that happen. Here I'm sitting at my monastery, the Maitreya Monastery, at the top of Swayambu in Kathmandu, the Swayambu Stupa, the most incredible, it's the Stupa of Manjushri. It's the birthplace of Gautama Buddha. It's the place where Krishna hanged out. You know, it's, it is a real thing. This is big time stuff, this location, this spot. And because I was born as Maitreya, that place got sponsorship from a Westerner to build a Maitreya monastery on this location. And when it came to me coming, I was there only to recognize the Rinpoche that was in charge, meet him, thank him for doing it, and he died in less than a month or two after I met him. And it was my responsibility within three or four years, he's to be found and I'm supposed to sit with him and enthrone him and then it becomes my monastery. And that's now I'm sitting there in that situation. Yeah. So all those years planting seeds, going through everything, there's no planning in it. Yeah. It's what, thank you for bringing me here scenario. This is not what happens to you. It's not, it's the magic of the Lord. The Lord lives like this. If you want to enter into that reality and end all suffering, you've got to take 100% refuge. This is not a bullshit game. I'm not saying these things to gain a religion or anything like that. I'm saying these things because we've got to make sure that Hitler does not come back and that Mussolini doesn't come back. And you either make a commitment to the Lord or... You're going to find yourself making a commitment to the next incarnation of Mussolini, and that's all there is to it. That super sucks. I read that. So normally what I do is that you'll find me in places when you don't know of me, you have no idea where I'm at, what I'm doing, you will find me in sacred sites, sitting in a pyramid with nobody around me. Yeah? Just one or two tukus, usually Mandarava. Yeah. But nobody else is allowed to come in. Yeah. I don't sit and talk with anybody unless they're a reincarnated master. 
and Rinpoche's, I waited, you know. And then all of a sudden, they come to my door knocking. Oh, yeah, I know. I had dreams of you. You're Padma Samhava. I had dreams of you. You're, you know, you're the leader of Sakyamuni. You know, oh, my God, you know, come to our monastery. Do this, do that. Let me put a throne on you. You know, let's, let's make all this monasteries come together and all that kind of stuff. That is the power of attraction and where you don't dream anymore. Yeah, you're in service, and your dreams are a state of service, not you being ran over by a monkey in a dream. You know, I mean, those are weird dreams. Your weird dreams is psychopathic. It has to do with your ego and fulfilling egotistical mannerisms. You know, try, well, you know oh, no, I'm going bald. You dream, oh, I have no clothes on, oh, no. You know, these are all based on fears. Yeah, it's a terrible thing, dreams. Not good, yeah. But if you're taking refuge and you spend all day doing good karma, yeah, and you find no fault in anybody and anything that happens that you expected to happen differently doesn't bother you, yeah, then you've taken refuge, yeah. I mean, you don't take refuge if, if you don't practice, and then you should have results. Every time you practice, that result changes you. It changes you. So the next time the situation comes up, you should not be reacting in the same way. So practice. Practice immediately. And then it, it changes you again. Because every time you allow that shit to go forth, you create karma. And, and you don't get rid of it. It will come back around with the same amount of energy. You know? But if you practice... You know, just hold back. Oh, you're all freaked out. You got this and that. You know, you wish that wouldn't have happened. Best thing to do is quiet down. Don't cry. Just relax. Take a deep breath. Keep taking another deep breath. Realize that it, it is all, not you, it's all built up. Yeah, and this is your opportunity. That is an opportunity. If you take it only as an opportunity and that this isn't anything bad, but this is your moment, you know? So now you seize that moment. Because you're going to take the demon that just entered you. And you're going to hold it. And you're not going to let it express to somebody else. It's your own making. It's your own expectations. It's your lack of tolerance. Your lack of empathy. Your lack of compassion. These teachings will come to you, yeah, you know. So you, you, the opportunity will always happen, always. That's because of me, yeah. I create the law, you know. I am the light, the light, the light. I'm not joking. <laughs> I'm the real thing. I'm light, yeah. The very thing you see from electricity and everything else, I will provide, you know, the light. And you'll get the light. Yeah, but it's a matter of whether or not you can practice the process so that the light can be received in Buddha and your bodhisattva can transmit light and we are going back and forth. We're creating the Sangha. Yeah, because you, if you don't practice, if you don't take refuge, you're never going to turn around and say to someone else, you should be taking refuge. You're never going to do that. And that's what you're supposed to do. It's not about you. If it, it, it's all about you because you think you're the one who has to take refuge. But it's not that. You need to take refuge so you can get other people to take refuge. That's what it's about. Does that make sense? Yeah? Because there's no, you can't save yourself. You know? You're all going to suffer. You're all going to do, do, do. So you have to help other people take refuge. That's why I do what I do. I create the center. I create tools. I give you the opportunity to help the whole world take refuge. Would you like an etheric weaver? Would you like a pendant? It's by Buddha Maitreya, the reincarnation of Christ. It comes with pujas. Pujas, what are pujas? Well, <laughs> it's taking refuge. Yeah. And then you say the benefit of what is taking refuge. And what is the Buddha, the Dharma, the Sangha? Now, how does that affect you? Yeah. And that's how we turn this into a sacred planet. Yeah. We're not, 
We're not trying to talk people into a religion. We're trying to get people to heal themselves. Yeah? To take responsibility for being an asshole. I can't, you cannot change another person. You must help that person to take refuge in order for them to change. That's the only way you can do it. And you have to take a deeper refuge. And if you take deeper refuge, then your only comment is that you should take refuge. Do you understand? There's not another comment. Oh, take vitamins. You know? Eat, eat, eat this. Do that. You know? Run this way. Run that way. Yeah? But take refuge. First thing. The only thing. And it's not a religion. It's a matter of responsibility. Can you respond? Do you have the ability to respond? Yeah? And, or, or just, you know, come out of your emotions. Always, always deal with things from your emotions. Yeah? And it, 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 it's as though you expect the world to do exactly as you wish. How's that going to work? How does that happen? Everybody's supposed to have some form of freedom. But if everybody runs around dictating their expectation for their personal wishes, then you would have to be kind of like doing your best to be subservient to fulfill those wishes. Does that make sense? That's not what we're here for. We're here to be of service. And you could still have people help as long as you take refuge. Because they're not going to fulfill your expectation, but if you're compassionate and empathetic, they will. You'll be a surprised person by, by truly holding no comment over your disenjoyment <laughs> of your imperfect situation. So sorry. Yeah? Does that make sense? <coughs> so, then, <laughs> if that makes sense, we'll go on. So you've seen bloodlines. Now, bloodlines is the one I showed you where it shows Mussolini and all that going through the end. Yeah, could that happen? Mm. So now there's this one. Dear Maga, we have some bad news. No, not that he lost. Not that your little coup attempt failed and its planners and the attackers are going to jail. No. The really bad news is why Trump told you he lost. Why he set it up way before the 2020 election. It wasn't voter fraud, but it was fraud. Trump told you the election was stolen to rip you off, to sucker you, to take your hard-earned money and shovel it into his pockets. He spent it on himself, not to take back the White House. It was the biggest scam in political history. Every dollar you sent him paid to keep his shaky business empire and lavish lifestyle going. It was a sucker's game all along. And you know who the sucker is? It's you. Yep, that's so true, yeah? So, bad karma, yeah, has a reaping situation, yeah? Especially when I am moving a lot of Rinpoche's and a lot of people to their reincarnation process and there's more and more in my ability to to bring about change to close this door on the on the astral plane. So Mussolini got away with it. The only thing that happened was that we beat the shit out of him. We crushed his head. We broke every rib in his body and hung him upside down and spat on him. That happened. Yeah. And we did that to quite a few of these people. We burnt Hitler. We hate him, had him shoot himself in the head along with his wife and take poison. Yeah. We had them do that. Yeah. Because there was no court on the land that was going to capture them and judge them and come out of this in a different way. Yeah. Because even the people of Europe, even the people of America, 
were still corrupt and still holding their wrong views. Yeah? We had all the lack of human rights and everything all through that time, the worst of the time. Yeah? So it was all a, a process. Yeah? And how hard is it to be able to, to bust the devil? When the devil is the liar, the devil is a con man. The devil can con you, yeah? So you don't see that you're being conned, yeah? And you actually think that you're a winner, and yet he never wins, you know? So what's the chance of this guy going to jail? Well, I've been waiting for a while for the right kind of people to come forth to say where this is at, and one of them is the top lawyer of Trump, his senior lawyer, the guy who got him off of uh, getting busted for dealing with Russia and, and uh, being a spy. He got him off, yeah. And, yeah, very famous lawyer. Well, he's, he's now coming out saying that uh, from what he's witnessed and everything, uh, he really thinks that this guy having, should go to jail. Having classified documents, that's him. particularly if you are actively using them, mm -hmm. could, be, uh, could be an offense well worthy of prosecution. Sure. Well worthy of prosecution. But um, if, as I suspect... This is about know, January 6th. If, yes, that is about January 6th. I think that's much different. Mm -hmm. I think this, that was the first time in American history that a president unconstitutionally attempted to remain in power uh, illegally. Uh, and I think this that is, his is from attorney. a vantage point prosecutable and should be prosecuted. In my own, in my own <laughs> view, and, and there are constitutional uh, practitioners. Now Bill Barr said the same thing. Or disagree. Mm -hmm. uh, he was his I attorney. I believe that is. Uh, so that guess what's going to happen, so folks? And what is it about the president's personality that made him impenetrable to Barr's assertions, his own legal counsel's assertion, his own campaign's assertions? What, what is it about him that couldn't hear that? Um, abject narcissism. And the wounding. Mm -hmm. the sense that he couldn't believe that he actually lost. Right. He doesn't believe he lost. I believe that. And do you think he ever will? Uh... Well, I think in some aspect he knows he did, but not in, not in the aspect that penetrates his public persona. Do you think he will run again? So that's a very interesting question, and that brings me back to another sort of obstacle uh, that I see um, to the healing of America. There is a simple way to disqualify President Trump. Yeah. He, he clearly violated the 14th Amendment of the Constitution, Article 3, when he gave aid and comfort in three hours of inaction, you know, with regard to what was happening on to the, the people Capitol, storming the Capitol, and sent out the equivocal, you know, email about tweet Pence, yeah, tweet. I'm sorry uh, about Pence, you know, uh, suggesting that Pence had had failed. Uh, that clearly gave aid and comfort to the insurrectionists. Under Article Three, giving aid and comfort to the insurrectionists means, you know, after a joint. <laughs> a joint uh, declaration by the House and the Senate, a majority, majority only. It doesn't require 60 or 67 You're votes. disqualified. You're disqualified for ever, from ever running it. So you know that's going to happen, at least that, and? Other thing. Which is exactly as you acknowledged how I feel. Uh, you know, I don't think the big lie. That's that, and this is this. Right. I don't think the big lie interfering with Pence you know, saying Mike deserves this when people are shouting, kill Pence. Right. Um, I think that's outrageous. I think interfering with what um, uh, the vice president, you know, was obligated to do, trying to, you know, persuade him <laughs> in very aggressive um, in personal terms. efforts yeah. um, to not, not to certify the election and to send certain electors back. I think that was, I think that was criminal. I agree. Yeah. And so does Garland. 
Yeah, this he's a genius. He's a top professor. He's he's a guy, you know. And <coughs> we're at a time to where the heart center is is the focus. That's how the first ray gets to where it's at. The only way law and the understanding of God's law that there is a right and a wrong, there is the ability to discern, discriminate, pull together facts take away the lies, pull together as much truth as we can, and the law helps us deal with the situation, yeah? But lies and delusions and corruption keeps us from being able to fulfill the law. So we can't change anything, yeah? So in this case, we have everything going on that allows the law to come in play. Yeah, and this this uh, Garland, he is so focused in second ray. Yeah, he's not the kind of guy you would think. Uh, he's a calm person. He's not an aggressive person. He he, uh, he has the second ray in his soul, which is very rare. But he also has a first ray personality. Yeah, so he's like born to be a lawyer, born to be a cop. You know, wouldn't back down. Even though he looks like he wouldn't fight, he, he's a bulldog. He just wouldn't back down, you know? He would just sit there and know his right and stand with courage, you know? Stand with strength. Not the physical stuff, but the spiritual stuff in order to get the truth clarified. And he'll go through everything it takes to unveil the lies and bring it out to be the truth. And this is the perfect guy to have is the one that's going to do this for us. So I think that's pretty pretty cool. So now we're going to do a puja. And we're going to do dispelling world glamour. Yeah. So let's just relax and listen to the puja because it's a pretty powerful one. Okay, just repeat after me. <coughs> I invoke the power, the love, and the wisdom of my ashram, soul, and monad. To guide me into the right activity in the plan. To clarify and stimulate my mind. To transform and transmute my feelings and emotions. To energize and vitalize and heal my physical and etheric body. <coughs> body. So there is a normal flow of energy in my physical and etheric body. Through this day and every day, I ask this in the name of the Christ to serve the one. All in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
The power of the light prevents the appearance of the glamour of destruction. The power of the light prevents the appearance of the glamour of isolation, of aloneness, of aloofness. The power of the light prevents the appearance of the glamour of superimposed will upon others and upon groups. The power of the light prevents the appearance of the glamour of love, of being loved. The power of the light prevents the appearance of the glamour of popularity. The power of the light prevents the appearance of the glamour of personal wisdom. The power of the light prevents the appearance of the glamour of selfish responsibility. The power of the light prevents the appearance of the glamour of too complete an understanding which negates right action. The power of the light prevents the appearance of the glamour of self-pity. The power of the light prevents the appearance of the glamour of the Messiah complex in the world of religion and world need. The power of the light prevents the appearance of the glamour of fear based on undue sensitivity. The power of the light prevents the appearance of the glamour of self-sacrifice. The power of the light prevents the appearance of the glamour of selfish unselfishness. The power of the light prevents the appearance of the glamour of self-satisfaction. The power of the light prevents the appearance of the glamour of selfish service. the appearance of the glamour of being busy. The power of the light prevents the appearance of the glamour of cooperation with the plan in an individual and not a group way. The power of the light prevents the appearance of the glamour of active scheming. The power of the light prevents the appearance of the glamour of creative work without true motive. The power of the light prevents the appearance of the glamour of good intentions, which are basically selfish. The power of the light prevents the appearance of the glamour of the spider at the center. The power of the light prevents the appearance of the glamour of God in the machine. The power of the light prevents the appearance of the glamour of the devious and continuous manipulation. The power of the light prevents the appearance of the glamour of self-importance from the standpoint of knowing of efficiency. The power of the light prevents the appearance of the glamour of harmony aiming at personal comfort and satisfaction. The power of the light prevents the appearance of the glamour of war. The power of the light prevents the appearance of the glamour of conflict with the objective of imposing righteousness and peace. The power of the light prevents the appearance of the glamour of vague artistic perception. The power of the light prevents the appearance of the glamour of psychic perception instead of intuition. The power of the light prevents the appearance of the glamour of musical perception. The power of the light prevents the appearance of the glamour of the pairs of opposites in the higher sense.
synthesis of forms. The power of the light prevents the appearance of the glamour of intellect. The power of the light prevents the appearance of the glamour of knowledge and of definition. The power of the light prevents the appearance of the glamour of assurance based on a narrow point of view. The power of the light prevents the appearance of the glamour of form which hides reality. The power of the light prevents the appearance of the glamour of organization. The power of the light prevents the appearance of the glamour of the outer, which hides the inner. The power of the light prevents the appearance of the glamour of devotion. The power of the light prevents the appearance of the glamour of adherence to forms and persons. The power of the light prevents the appearance of the glamour of idealism. The power of the light prevents the appearance of the glamour of loyalties of creeds. the appearance of the glamour of sentimentality. The power of the light prevents the appearance of the glamour of interference. The power of the light prevents the appearance of the glamour of lower pairs of opposites. The power of the light prevents the appearance of the glamour of world saviors and teachers. The power of the light prevents the appearance of the glamour of a narrow vision. The power of the light prevents the appearance of the glamour of fanaticism. The power of the light prevents the appearance of the glamour of magical work. The power of the light prevents the appearance of the glamour of the relation of the opposites. The power of the light prevents the appearance of the glamour of subterranean powers. The power of the light prevents the appearance of the glamour of that which brings together. The power of the light prevents the appearance of the glamour of the physical body. The power of the light prevents the appearance of the glamour of mysterious and the secret. prevents the appearance of the glamour of emerging, manifested forces. The power of the light negates the quality of the glamour from affecting you. The power of the light destroys the life behind the glamour. As a soul, I work in light, and darkness cannot touch me. I take my stand within the light. I work, and from that point, I never move. The light is one, and in that light shall we see light.
This is the light that turns the darkness into day. the appearance of all world glamour. The power of our united light negates the quality of the glamour from affecting all mankind. The power of our united light destroys the life behind the glamour.
Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All in the name of the Mother, the Soul, and the collective consciousness of humanity. Okay, so thank you all very much for attending, and I hope you thought a lot about this. You know, one thing about taking refuge is that taking refuge happens every time you eat. That's why it's called prasadam. If you don't sit down and eat and finish your meal before you do something else, you've never taken refuge, ever. Yeah, prasadam is the point that you have the opportunity to give thanks. Yeah, You can do this all the time, <coughs> but if you do it while you're eating, and at the her very highest point, Buddha is literally the one feeding you. You know, So if you're going to take refuge in order to receive the energy that's coming through the service from Buddha, Buddha is not in a place of receiving service. Buddha is giving service. So when you get something to eat, you have to sit down because you're in the Sangha and you've taken refuge. So you have to take refuge in whatever it is you're receiving. Whatever it is you're receiving. Yeah? Even if you don't like what you're receiving, you have to take refuge in it. You know, to figure out, okay, that's upsetting. I'm going to stay calm. <laughs> take refuge. Because every situation is an opportunity of taking refuge. But when you're eating, that's your highest point. That's where your pleasure, wow, I'm enjoying this. God, thank you very much. This is really great. Yummy, yummy. You know? But you've got to go through the whole thing. You've got to, you know, you can't have, you know, laze refuge. You know, you're given the opportunity to take refuge every time you eat. Yeah? Does that make sense? Yeah. And if you're drinking water, yeah, probably a pretty good time to take refuge. Yeah. And, and taking refuge just means, you know, thank you, Buddha Maitreya, Jesus the Christ, you know, for providing this food. Thank you, Jesus Maitreya, for bringing me here. Yeah. Thank you for the opportunity. Hey, thanks for the shoes. Yeah. Everything that comes in a process of any kind, whether you like it or not, you know, you got to take refuge so that it's not a material thing. Yeah. Because it, it, your opportunity is to make it material or not make it material. Let's choose taking refuge. And that way, y you know, you're not taking any chances. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. You're blessing everything. Yeah, everything that comes to you, it's not about you. If it's about you, then you're not going to take refuge in it. Because there's no reason to thank me for you. Yeah, it's all about you. Does that make sense? Yeah, okay. Enjoy. Thank you very much. <laughs>